Hey everybody, please, if you have not watched part one of this uh, mini series here, please stop this video, go and watch part one because it'll make a whole lot more sense. Uh, this video was inspired by a uh, letter I got from, a, or not a letter, just, just a comment I saw on a thread and, and that uh, Christopher has, I uh, noticed, has since become a subscriber to this channel. So Christopher, uh, welcome. And I uh, thank you for, um, you just helped me ins inspire me to make these uh, these videos. And, and I hope your cat is uh, is doing well. I hope the visit with the vet goes well uh, tomorrow, I think is your, no, tomorrow, tomorrow be Sunday. So I'm not sure, maybe it was today. But anyway, I'm hoping for the best. But what inspired me was your guilt that, hey, should I have stayed on that prescription diet? You heard all the folks telling you how bad it was full of fillers. So that was my inspiration for part one. And um, Dana, the one who made the video uh, blasting prescription diets, <clears throat> in part one, she gives a real good perspective. And if I can review real quick, she basically is saying that therapeutic diets are untested. They're, they're not safe. Um, and mainly her reasoning for that actually is, is, is interesting. It's because the FDA doesn't control food. The FDA, if you're a drug, you have to prove that your product does what it does, that it's safe, all that kind of stuff. But the FDA doesn't work with food. So all these medicinal claims that Hills and Royal Canaan and Purina make, it's all that, it's not controlled by the FDA. So she sees that as, well, that means they're untested and they're unsafe. And in that video, I, I address that. Um, the other thing is, it's probably more uh, disturbing, not more disturbing, but she says that um, the veterinarians selling these unsafe, untested diets have no idea what they're talking about because they did get very little nutrition training and whatever they do get, they get from who? The folks selling them the, the therapeutic diets. So of course it's just biased and it's all corruption. So anyway, um, that was kind of what I got out of the summary of the, the first part. And uh, But again, please go back and watch it. But let's go ahead and jump into part two. She gets more into the nitty gritty of ingredients and stuff like that. And, and I, I uh, actually like this part better than the first part. So I hope you will as well. And um, again, to Christopher and everybody that watches these videos, uh, again, let, let me just reiterate I really believe Dana believes everything she's saying. I, I went to their, their website, the Dogs Naturally magazine. Just an awesome group of people that, that they're so committed to, to dogs and cats and animals of, of all kinds. I mean, the world would be a wonderful place if people thought the way these folks do. Uh, but they're, it's an example of their bias determining how they're interpreting some things and so we definitely have a different perspective so i i hope this is helpful for those of you that are kind of confused and haven't delved into this as much as as uh, as i have so again appreciate being here and enjoy part two now you might still be thinking yeah but dana vet diets contain special ingredients that are tested to help dogs well, the truth is, there's usually nothing in vet diets that can't be found in over-the-counter foods. And think about it. All of these pet food manufacturers that make veterinary diets also make regular old foods, usually with poor quality, high processed ingredients. Now, do you think that they're using different ingredients for their prescription foods? These foods, they're all made in the same factory using the same ingredients from the same suppliers as their cheap Foods. Okay, so um, Purina, Royal Canin, and Hills. She says all these pet food suppliers or pet food companies. There's only three that she's really describing here. Uh, they use the same cheap ingredients from this and make it in the same factories and buy the ingredients from the same suppliers. You know that they. That, so what goes into prescription diet is going into their cheap food. Well. First of all, let's break this down a little bit. Mars owns a, a conglomerate. I mean, not, I don't even know what the word is. Just they own so many brands of pet food from pretty good stuff to really awful stuff <clears throat> and everything in between. So I, I don't even know how to put them into a category. Uh, Purina makes, oh my goodness, dozens of brands of food. Some of them pretty much the same. Others are not very good. They make a couple really good ones. Uh, and then they have their prescription diet line or their therapeutic line. Uh, Hills is the only one that I'm aware of that actually makes their therapeutic line. That's their main thing that they started in 1948. 
It was in 1965 that Mark Morris Jr., the son of Mark Morris, uh, who started Hills, um, he was the one that said, hey, Dad, and I'm paraphrasing here, <laughs> but hey, Dad, we're starting to manage all these different diseases by controlling nutrients. What about the nutrient levels of healthy dogs and cats? Is there an optimal level to help reduce the risk of these diseases that we're managing later on? And that is the whole premise of science diet. Um, Hills does not make a cheap brand. Um, they have tried making uh, natural brands and stuff like that, but I mean, now we're, I think they're back to just, here's our healthy food, here's our therapeutic food. So, um, so to the ingredient uh, claim she was saying there, uh, therapeutic diets do not have magical ingredients. Uh, most of the ingredients, chicken, corn, cellulose, as she said, flaxseed, all those kind of things, um, they're used in therapeutic diets. The difference, and this is what Dana and most of the folks that are under her umbrella of all natural are just, you, you've noticed from this video, everything's ingredients, ingredients, ingredients. She never talked once about nutrients. And that's the point that she's missing. What makes a puppy food different from a senior food? They both have chicken, they both have corn, they both have animal fat, they both have flaxseed, they both have vitamin E. Oh, I guess puppy and senior are the same. No, it's the amounts in that diet and that deliver a different nutrient profile. That is true with, let's just use science diet versus prescription diet. She did, she did mention one thing that is actually true some of the best meat meals, the best quality meat meals that are really pure, they're gonna go into prescription diet and not science diet. Why? Because we need lower mineral levels in many of those therapeutic diets, especially urinary diets and renal diets, where some of the meat meal or the meats that can go into regular science diet because those uh, requirements are, are less, less stringent, let me say, for the healthy dog or healthy cat, they get very strict in the therapeutic side. So she actually is incorrect there where it's the same ingredients. It could be the same, you know, it's chicken meal, but we're gonna take the purest, most expensive chicken meal we get. And I can tell you, it's gonna go into cat food way before it goes into dog food. Why? Because cats are much more sensitive to those mineral excesses. So if you're designing diets around the, the finished nutrient profile, that determines the quality of your ingredients that go in. And so uh, that's the point that she's missing, but that's what differentiates all these different diets. It's not the ingredients, it's not how appealing they sound to you, it's not where they are on the ingredient panel, it's what's the nutrients being delivered. That's the difference between a healthy cat food that, no, let's go, let's go even, let's go worse. Let's say an unhealthy cat food that's extremely high in protein, extremely high in calcium and phosphorus and magnesium that's predisposing this cat to kidney disease, to struv struvite crystals, uh, to calcium oxide stones, whatever, um, versus a healthy cat food or what? We've controlled that protein a little bit, but we're really controlling the mineral content. We're, we're controlling the, the urine pH to help prohibit stones from being formed. That's a good healthy cat food. Or we can go to the extreme where, hey, your cat just seems to plug up all the time with struvite stones. We have her on a therapeutic diet. Guess what? We're gonna even restrict those levels even more, okay? The, ingredients going into that will determine those nutrient levels. So that's what Dana is missing. And that's an important part that, uh, you know, there's no unicorn uh, meat in therapeutic food. There's no fairy dust. There's no special ingredient. It's which ingredients at what levels to manage that disease. And I will say real quick, uh, I've even been trained now to say manage. The FDA did not like back when they were trying to figure out what to do with prescription diet. They didn't like us saying that uh, KD treats kidney disease or that CD treats urinary stones. So they told us as reps, we had to say manage because treat falls under uh, a drug. We're not treating a disease with a drug, we're managing it with diet. So that's why you'll notice in all my videos, I've, I've been really trained, I got used to it before I retired, but uh, to say manage instead of treat. So the FDA did have some impact, if you, if you wanna call it that, that we will tell you, KD manages uh, kidney disease. It doesn't treat it like a drug would. It's super hard to believe that the cellulose, corn, gluten meal, and byproduct meal used in prescription diets, it's extensively researched and proven better than the same crap that they use in their supermarket foods. 
Well, Dana has been uh, watching the same uh, YouTube videos or uh, <laughs> propaganda because I hear the same stuff about poor cellulose and corn gluten meal. Cellulose is a... Uh, uh, basically a wood product that it's it's a uh, fiber source uh, insoluble so it's part of the help the gi track uh, motility uh bee pulp would be another uh, fiber source there's a bunch out there but they love picking on cellulose and saying that it's sawdust that's swept up off the floor <laughs> it's not it's a fiber source it's high quality actually it's one of the more expensive ones because it's it's a very pure uh a uh, fiber source with a lot, a lot of extra nutrients in it. So when you're trying to formulate a diet and control all the nutrients, a, a fiber source that's not adding a different nutrient is actually a good thing. So uh, in corn gluten meal, I, again, if she understood, and, and I don't mean to demean her, this is something everybody should understand. The reason corn gluten meal is such a valuable uh, ingredient in therapeutic diets is because there's many times, even in carnivore uh, diets, where we need to provide protein to, to provide amino acids, but uh, the kidneys are damaged. There's compromised kidneys. So all that meat protein is going to produce nitrogen waste. It's going to be overtaxing on the kidneys. There's going to be a lot of phosphorus that's going to come with that meat source, no matter how pure it is. So by adding corn gluten meal, it allows us that now you heard gluten, right? That's the protein part of the corn, not the whole kernel, just the protein part, that little heart inside there. By adding corn gluten meal, you're adding amino acids, but there's no nitrogen waste. It, it's a perfect combination, just like human... Um, um, vegetarians, uh, many of them will get actually more protein in their diet than you and I eating our steaks and hamburgers. Why? Because they're combining protein sources. So good nutritionists know this and they'll do that. So uh, again, corn gluten meal is just one. Egg would be another excellent one. Uh, she talks about, I'm not going to put her whole video up here, but she talks about how corn gluten meal and egg are actually cheap, uh, poor quality ingredients and you should you should just want meat. And again, she's missing the point. We're putting a whole diet together to treat a hill, a, a hill, a, an ill animal. If they have renal compromise, you don't just pump in protein. All that's doing is worsening the condition. So, uh, again, she doesn't understand. It. She does. She does mention a byproduct meal. Great example. You can get chicken byproduct meal that's nothing but garbage, and you can get chicken byproduct meal that's basically organ meat from human grade. Uh, chickens that just didn't go to the human market that just got put into into um, chicken meal or chicken byproduct meal byproducts organ meat falls under there you have no idea as a consumer that's what i'm saying afco really does not try to help you at, at all with this there should be definitely a distinction between the, the garbage over here and human grade uh, chicken organ meat over here but it's not you see chicken byproduct meal on the uh, ingredient panel the way you know which one is garbage and which one is good or which one that food company is using, show me the nutrients, which is my mantra on my whole channel. Show me the calcium and phosphorus in that diet and I'll tell you whether they used garbage, uh, crap as she called it, chicken meal, or they used really good stuff. She has no idea because she's not looking at nutrients, she's just looking at ingredient panels, which 99% of the folks are doing these days. Recommended by vets, who would actually buy this stuff? And how exactly would this manage my dog's joints anyway? Where are the therapeutic ingredients that I can't find in any cheap grocery store food? Well, it must be the fish oil and glucosamine hydrochloride. And I'll tell you what, if you want to feed your dog this quality of diet, and I really hope you don't, then why not just go to the supermarket, grab a cheap bag of food that's probably half the price, and just add some fish oil and glucosamine for a few cents a day. So what Dana's talking about here is she actually went through, I didn't put it in, in my video here because it'd be too long, but she went through and, and used Purina's joint diet, looked at the ingredient panel, of course, tore it to shreds because all she's doing is looking for, show me the fresh appealing ingredients, not the ones that I don't understand. I actually just did a video on our joint diet just about two weeks ago. So it's funny that uh, she brings this one up, but um, why not just buy a cheap food, like she said, and then just add fish oil because she's she's kind of correct. She's 50% correct. It is the fish oil in the joint diets, whether it's Purina's, Hills, or Royal Canin's. Um, it's the magic that makes it work, okay? Um, but there is a problem with her thinking. One is that how much fish oil do I use? And it's a fish oil. The reason you're using fish oil is because it's a high quality uh, omega-3 source. 
So I'm going to use fish oil, but I don't know how much, and I want to get omega-3s in the dog. The problem is, and, and Hills does this better than Royal Canin and, and Purina, you need to get as much of the EPA, that's a special amino, uh, uh, omega-3, that's the omega-3 fatty acid that actually turns down the expression of the genes that are producing the agrokinase enzymes that are destroying the cartilage. Now, I know that's, that's a mouthful there, but it's one of uh, Hill's foods that actually uh, deals with uh, gene expression. We can't change the genes. Genes are designed to do what they're going to do. God has just made it that way. We can't change them, but we can change their expression. So she's right. It is fish oil but you need the right amount of fish oil and you need, more importantly, the right amount of EPA. Google it and you'll see EPA is a magical omega-3 that actually uh, turns down the gene that's producing the damage to the cartilage. That's, that's the key. NSAIDs don't do that. Drugs won't do that. Uh, glucosamine, she mentioned that. I doubt it's doing anything in the diet. It's in there, but it really is unproven at this point. It's just anecdotal. But that EPA is what's doing the magic. The problem is, Dana, if you're going to just say, well, I'm just going to feed uh, or add EPA, even I'll go find a supplement. One, supplements are much more uh, less controlled than even dog and cat food. So it's the Wild West when it comes to supplements. I'd be very cautious there. But the problem is if you're going to feed a regular food, a cheap food from the grocery store, even if it's an expensive food, uh, origin, taste of the wild, whatever, if you look at those diets, you'll see the omega-6s, the omega-3s in those diets, lots of 6s and, and a little 3s. Usually it's like 10 to 1 in, in most foods I've ever looked at, okay? Problem with the arthritic dog, and this is what Purina was getting at with the fish oil, omega-6 is great for skin and coat, but they're, they increase inflammation for that arthritic dog. So you need to get the 6s down. And of course, omega-3s are the anti-inflammatory uh, omega um, fatty acid. So we need to get them up. So instead of 10 to 1, the problem is you'd be feeding a supplement of threes, but you still got all those sixes in that cheap food. So you're kind of, you're paddling upstream. That, that ratio is not going to be very beneficial to the joint. Purina brought that uh, um, that range down to only two to one. Vast improvement. I think Royal Canaan was three to one with their diet. Purina was two to one. Do you see that the benefit here is now we're getting more threes and less sixes. JD from Hills is the only diet in the world that actually has an inverted ratio of sixes to threes, where you're getting more threes and less sixes. That's the magic of how that diet works, and it works within three weeks. It's pretty amazing. And again, it's the only diet that was tested as a pharmaceutical and scored just as high. It just takes a little longer, okay? So so there's just a little bit of information that, that Dana should know about that diet that she just ripped apart, that there actually are reasons. Now, again, she's just looking at an ingredient panel. The other thing I would say about that cheap food that she's talking about that she's going to add uh, fish oil to what are the what's the protein calcium and phosphorus and sodium level in that diet most arthritic dogs are older they're at a risk of kidney disease they're at a risk of calcium oxalate stones uh, hypertension stuff like that we can control the risk of that by controlling those nutrients not just feeding something because it's fresh or natural or whatever so and as far as nature goes i know she's into nature uh there is no geriatrics in nature uh, old there's no old wolves walking around that are getting dental care and vaccines and parasite control and optimal nutrient levels no they they eat what they can it, it's not very healthy for them once they get older and their kidneys are shot that kind of thing so Nature is not very, very nice to older uh, dogs and cats. What we can do through the veterinarian and the research that's being done uh, is pretty amazing, actually. But I, I think she misses that because she's kind of stuck in that all natural world. In my opinion, veterinary diets are the biggest scam in the world and nobody cares, except me and you, of course. But the very sad fact is veterinary diets are among the worst quality, least safe foods that you can give your dog twice the price you know it's christmas so i i want to be i want to be uh charitable here and and not uh get like i did with with cam on that video but um i don't know how to respond to that i mean i, I hopefully i've even given enough information that you know to say that it's uh that therapeutic diets prescription diets are untested and poor quality uh again i guess it's a good example of you could be 
totally sincere, totally committed to your beliefs, but if your bias is what's leading you and you're not looking at the whole picture, uh, again, it goes back to, I guess, the pet food puzzle guy. What did I say? I started this channel to take all those different pieces, just like a puzzle here on the on my table here, and put them together so that you get a clear picture. Uh, here's a perfect example of not getting a clear picture because you're just looking at these pieces over here. Or you've put them together in a way that doesn't make any sense. The, the amount of research and money and evidence, evidence-based science and the results that, that we see with these therapeutic diets, I, I really don't understand how Dana and, and her team uh, can believe what they believe, but hey, you know, so it makes the world go round, right? But uh, again, it's heartbreaking. Um, it's really a shame that people are being misled and not use, utilizing these awesome diets that really can help their animals. So um, uh, just, um, it's just sad. It's just really sad. So the next time your vet wants you to feed your dog a prescription diet, I want you to ask them to review the ingredient list with you one by one and ask them for hard evidence that those ingredients are any better than those that you would find in regular food. Well, I'm thinking if the veterinarian knew how a prescription diet works, that when the client said, you know, show me the proof of how it works, one, uh, he could pull out the Hills book, and there's lots of uh, references to the different studies for each of the therapeutic diets in there. You could do that. Uh, you could just tell them, because obviously they trust the veterinarian, or that they wouldn't be coming there, they'd be going somewhere else. You could say, yes, there are decades of research and ongoing research all the time. I go to lectures, I go to continuing ed, that's how I keep up on all this stuff. So yeah, there's lots out there. Um, you could also just more simply, if you're a veterinarian that's practiced for a period of time, you could just say, I see the results of these diets. I mean, I'm not a nutritionist, but I've learned enough to know um, with your cat with urinary stones, if we don't get her on a diet that's designed to prevent those stones, chances are they're coming back. We need a diet that's restricted in the minerals those stones are made of, that, that maintains a urine pH that helps prohibit stones. Uh, you know, there could be basic things that a veterinarian, hopefully, if they were any of my veterinarians, I would hope, could explain as to why we want you to use this food. Um, what else? I think that's, uh, that's about it. As far as each individual ingredient, I'm sure I, I could guarantee you there's going to be doctors that are going to say, well, I'm not sure why they use that or why that's in there. Um, but I'm most interested in the finished results and the nutrients provided, not each and every ingredient. That's, you know, I, I'm trusting these nutritionists are picking those ingredients to deliver the specific nutrients to manage your pet's disease. That's the whole point. And again, bottom line, I, I think for most clients, they trust the vet they go to. If the vet says, look, I, I see these results every day. And that's what I would tell Dana, just animal lover to animal lover. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just the messenger. I'm not the brilliant people coming up with these two, these diets and all. And, and a lot of when I would sit through some of their lectures and stuff, a lot of it whew, over my head. Okay. So I had to keep it kind of to this level down here. If the veterinarians had really crazy, uh, questions that were way beyond my expertise, they could call the 800 number and talk to a, an actual board certified nutritionist and get the answer they need. Well, that was a lot of information, and I apologize if I went long with that, but uh, if you're still with me, uh, thank you, and I hope all that information was helpful. And again, I, I'm just really hopeful that in these videos, at least some of you uh, pet parents out there that love your animals so much will not uh, neglect the opportunity of using these therapeutic diets uh, if, God forbid, the um, time arrives where you need to try one of them. Uh, please trust your vet on this. And, and, if, and, and as Dana said, I agree, ask a lot of questions, um, you know, press your vet to, to explain to you why they're, they're recommending what they're recommending. But anyway, thanks for uh, staying with me through all that. And I hope that was beneficial and I will catch you next time. And again, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah.